G'day, it's Heath here from PickingLessons.com. Lord Injuquin, it's such a great tune. In the last two lessons, we've looked at it for the guitar and the banjo, and both of those arrangements can be played completely on their own without any accompaniment. This mandolin arrangement is the same thing. We've just heard it with the, the fingerstyle guitar in the background along with the mandolin, but we've got the chords and the harmonies throughout this mandolin arrangement. Uh, double stops and full four note chords and three note chords as well. So it could certainly be played on its own. It's a very pretty tune and with the support of those chords and double stops, it works really nicely. I have to say though, it's probably the most challenging out of the three instruments to play on the mandolin, Lord Injiquin. It's pretty tricky on this mandolin. So in a moment, we're gonna take a look at part A or the first four bars of part A here in this lesson. But if you head on over to PickingLessons.com, you better get yourself a copy of the tablature that we're going to be working from. Uh, you'll also find the member section, the next part of these video lessons, where we'll have a look at part A, finishing that off, and also look at part B. And we'll break it all down and have a look at some exercises and things you need to watch. So PickingLessons.com for all of that. Let's start out here though with a slow play through part A, just the first four bars, and we'll have a bit of a chat about some of the hand positions and what we're really looking at here for this tune. Part A. First four bars. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's the first four bars of part A. Uh, firstly, we're in the key of D, so we've got some easy chords in there. We've got like this open D position, we've got a D position here, there's a nice A uh, inversion here as well. Uh, there's a couple of G chords in there in this part of the tune and a B minor, so those chords are going to be in there. Uh, we're in 6-4 time, so that's pretty interesting. So most music's in 4-4 four, four time, 4 beats of the bar, 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3-4. This is in 6-4 time. So 6-4 time, we're counting it. You may have noticed in that slow playthrough, I counted in 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It gives you a feel very similar to 6-8 time, really, but the structure of the rhythm is different. So looking at the beginning there, that pickup note ends up being played on beat 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So keep an eye out for that. But otherwise, first measure. We're starting out with this D chord position there, so a three finger D chord. One little side note just before we do get started about this tune and this arrangement for the mandolin. It's pretty tricky, it's quite hard. I'd anticipate that this version is going to be for the more advanced student because of the strength really needed to play these chords and keep everything sounding really clean. So give it a go, but yeah, it is a harder tune. So first chord here on the D. We want to let our chords ring for as long as we can, but it's a little tricky on the mandolin because everything's so close as opposed to say the, the guitar or even the banjo. So this first chord, hold on to it while we pick the next melody note, but then you'll probably find you need to move your hand to play that first string. But any opportunity you get to hold the notes in the chord, even those open strings, just let them ring out. It'll make the tune sound very different. Okay, so that first chord position there over the D, first, third, and fourth fingers. You can take your pick and kind of brush over the strings or try and play it as one solid sound. Both ways work. I've done a little bit of both in the way I played it. Both ways are okay. The main thing is we hear that melody note at the end of the, of the strum. So that D there on string, uh, string two. The way you're gonna use your fingers in this arrangement here, sometimes your little finger's gonna end up playing uh, fret five, other times your third finger will play fret five. Depends on what chords before and after the melody passages. 
There is a guide in the tablature, but if you feel like you need to switch to your third or to your fourth or change it again, that's okay. But, but keep in mind, because of the chords, your fingering may end up being a little bit different. So the way you'd normally play, say fret five and fret four, you might end up using four, three, and one, rather than three, two, and one, for example. So there's a guide in the tablature, but, but after those chords, that's the main thing. We're gonna guide the fingering into place because of those chords. So the first measure there, we've got this D, then to a partial, partial G chord. Let's move on to measure two. Measure two, we have some double stops to kick us off. We can hold that double stop there, that's not too, too tricky. While we play the open A. Now this B minor chord, this is a challenging one. Our first finger needs to bar itself across fret two on string one and two, while our third finger arches up over string three and places on fret four of string four. So that's a B minor and the melody notes on top. So it's a pretty tricky chord there. Really strong hand position to hold that one. Barring first finger, fingertip on finger three, open, open D string in there. It wouldn't matter if you, you blocked out the D string. It would still sound okay, but it, it's nice and full with the D string in there. Open passing note. What's your rhythm? Uh, pretty much the rhythm structure. You've got crotchets, quavers, so, um, quarter notes, eighth notes, uh, and then we just got to the half note there. So that was the one, two, three. Measure three. Here in measure three, we're starting out with that G chord again. Little passage out of the D scale. D open string double stop, and then. So try to hold onto that first finger there, the A note in your D chord. Just to get that last two note double stop together. Moving on to the E minor here, we've got the melody Accompanied with that, the double stop positions for the for the E minor chord, so we have our melody ends up being on the bottom here. And so your left hand position, first and third fingers remain using first and third fingers, open string, passing note to the A double stop, sixth fret, seventh fret. So the key there is to really use the same fingers as you go through for the double stops, first, third and first fingers. Open string passing note. First and third fingers again for the double stop. So left hand positions are quite hard. The right hand's fairly straightforward, uh, watching that rhythm structure as we go through, but the rhythm's pretty straightforward. It's really the chords that are making this challenging, but it's also making the arrangement sounding quite nice. Like again, without all the chords and double stops, It's pretty, but it's not the same as bringing in the harmony as we go. It's a very different way of playing it. You can play it on its own. It's gonna work just on its own. Although playing it with the guitar or other instruments obviously will complement it as well. Okay, so Lord Inchilkin, if you head over to pickandlessons.com, you'll get yourself this tablature that we're working from there. And in the member section, we'll follow on this lesson uh, with the second half of part A and then into part B. Break it all down, look at the hand positions, have a chat about some things that will make it easier. So pickandlessons.com, I'll see you there.